Although GA4 promises to keep bots outside of your GA4 property automatically, some of them still make it to your reports. In this video, we're gonna see how to investigate for these instances and how to try to actually exclude them from your reports and to prevent them from polluting your results. Let's go into the browser to see how it's done. Here we are in the DDU GA4 rollup property and we're gonna start in the user acquisition report in the standard one from the lifecycle collection. Now, the first line of defense that GA4 uses is the user metric because as you can see in the video that we're gonna refer to from our YouTube channel about active users, it doesn't show you number of all the total users which I'm gonna demonstrate super quickly here. I'm gonna add total users and also a metric that's called users, which is actually active users in the language of GA4. Let's move them up here and let's move users as well. And now when you look at this table, you're gonna see the discrepancy where almost 1.8 thousand of users wouldn't make it to this report by default because the definition of an active user is that it's either a new user or somebody who had an engaged session meaning that all the users out there which is the browser device pair that repeatedly come back to your website but do not make an engaged session they don't even surface in the GA4 reports now the second tip that I will give you for discovering bots is to drill deeper in the reports. So basically we can, let's say we want to look at the landing page, which is going to actually slice this report even further and then look for the anomalies here in the engagement metrics. What are the engagement metrics? It's engaged sessions, engagement rate, engaged sessions per user, Average engagement time, there is one more that I don't see here and we're gonna add it super quickly here now. It's called session duration. I believe that is, no, average session duration. So let's move it up in this hierarchy so we have a faster access to it. Now, this is my preferred combo for searching for anomalies. As you can see here, the average session duration, well, yeah, it's, it all pretty much looks the same. Engaged sessions, it's actually a total number, so it needs to be divided by a number of sessions to understand the engagement rate, which is what we see here. Also, engaged sessions per user and the average engagement time. But as you can see, DDU property has a pretty healthy score regarding bots. Nevertheless, I'm gonna show you how to track down problematic behavior in your own account. So let's go into the exploration, which gives us more flexibility when it comes to researching deeper into the metrics and dimensions. Let's say we wanna understand how the session source medium performs when it comes to conversions or conversion rates. Now I'm going to add conversions and I'm going to add session conversion rate and user conversion rate all into this table. Simply double click on them and it will populate. Right now we're looking at the report for session source medium in terms of conversions and the conversion rates. But if we wanted to make this table more accurate, we will add session duration as a dimension, average session duration, here it is. So if I add it to the table and maybe sort in the ascending order, we're going to see which channels are actually bringing in traffic with zero session duration. So there are quite a few here, but if you notice, and I wouldn't say that this one from Simo Ahava is bringing in bot traffic. But for example, if you notice conversions happening 
on the sessions that had zero every session duration, it would be a sign of anomaly. So let's filter further down and say we want to see only where conversions are more than zero. Now these ones look super healthy here as well, but I've noticed on different properties and different accounts that there are some channels that actually have zero session duration and have conversions as well. Duration is an important metric here because bots tend to perform actions way faster than humans. So they're going to do it for way less time than a human would be able to click on the pages and perform a real life session. That's why the every session duration is an important metric here. As you can see, it's all about digging deeper in the reports and trying to find the anomalies. Now, let me show you an advanced trick how you can find even more accurate and more granular data to actually identify bots in your reports. One of the automatically collected event parameters is a metric called engagement time in milliseconds. Now, you will be able to use it in your reports only if you register it as a custom metric. And you will do this by finding it in this drop down here. Obviously, we already did it, which is why it's not accessible there. But once you find it in the drop down, make sure to choose a proper unit of measurement, which is milliseconds. And then event as the scope will be automatically chosen for you because right now there is no possibility for you to add user scope metric in GA4. I'm talking about the custom ones. Once you have it registered and you let the data sink in for a couple of days, you'll be able to add it in an exploration, like I'm going to do it here. Here it is a custom metric engagement time in milliseconds. And then you can see here the total engagement time for all the sessions that happened across your channels. It's somewhat difficult to show you how to chase bots and how to kick them out in DDU property because it, as I said, has a pretty healthy traffic coming into it. But what I usually do, I go into audiences and then I try to create an audience that's actually representing healthy traffic. So once you have engagement time in milliseconds registered as a dimension, you'd be able to exclude these people who actually has such a low engagement time in their sessions. So let's say we want to exclude people who load page view as an event in a shorter time span than 500 milliseconds. Right now it's excluding everybody, but that's happening because there are lots of page view events being logged without even a custom parameter for the engagement time in milliseconds. I don't know why it's happening like that, but it is. I debugged several sessions and it happens all the time, even though Google promises this to be an automatically collected parameter with each event being logged. So uh, let's find again the page view and say to avoid these that have engagement time of zero, which is the default when the custom parameter hasn't been loaded. I want those who have longer engagement time than one millisecond, but up to 500. Right now you see it excluded only 1.5k, which is a reasonable number of bots in all the users here. Let's say this is a no bot, no bots audience. Again, we want to say, let's include where session duration, where it is, here it is, where session duration is longer than, let's say two seconds. We apply that. G4 is unable to retrieve an estimate for this audience definition, but still we trust our hunch that bots are those who have session duration shorter than two seconds. Again, you can also 
exclude sorry you can also exclude by geography for example if your target audience is not in a particular part of the world or a particular city even you can exclude people here because those are probably not people at all they are bots for example i've seen questions in our expert groups that people see email visits coming from cities that are not being targeted with the email campaign at all so yeah it can happen that somebody moves a city and they are still on the list but you know if it's coming from a different part of the world that's not of your interest at all it's probably a bot for now i'm going to save this audience and we'll check in one of our upcoming videos whether this audience populates and how fast Obviously, it was not that easy in DDU property to show you how to chase down bots because there are not many of them in this property, but feel free to apply the techniques that I showed here to try to chase down bots in your property. Remember, it's all about focusing and focusing deeper and then trying to find the anomalies and to understand whether these anomalies mirror what's possible in the real world or whether they are just you know, machines going through your website and performing certain actions. I hope that now, after watching this video, you have a better understanding how bots actually infiltrate into your reports and what you can do about it to prevent them from polluting your results. If you like the video, please click the like button and subscribe to our channel. See you soon.